It seems like it's been 40 weeks since you got 40 winks. Your back pain, unbearable. Tossing, turning, trying to find that pain-free position. And that's the moment you realize you can't spend another waking moment putting off treatment. The Joint and Spine Center is Cincinnati's leading destination for spine care with a ton of surgical and non-surgical treatments for back pain. So when a moment has the power to change the rest of your life, go to the one place with the power to change it for the better, the Christ Hospital Health Network. This changes everything. The Pound This Podcast is brought to you by the Christ Hospital Health Network. This is an In Case You Missed It episode. This is actually from June of 2020, where my trainer, Josh Garrett, interviews me about my weight loss journey. And I'm choosing to replay this because um, I feel like there's such a turnover in audience and you might be brand new here and you don't really know too much about me. And I'm like, oh, it's just fun to have it where I have a conversation with somebody else about me instead of me just talking about myself for a half hour. (laughs) So in case you missed it, here is Josh Garrett interviews me about my weight loss journey. I want to lose weight, but I don't know how to get started. What should I meal prep every week? How do I get those sweet booty gains? Inspiration for your healthy lifestyle. The Pound This Podcast with Amanda Valentine. Thank you so much for listening to The Pound This Podcast. I am Amanda Valentine. Josh Garrett is here. Josh Garrett, interview er <laughs> extraordinaire for this episode. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes <laughs> afterwards and see what you have to say. Um, yeah, so I, first off, I want to say that this was your idea. This was. This that, was my idea. That you were us do an episode where you interview me, um, which I'm I'm curious to see what kind of questions you ask me. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I just think that it's easy to have a conversation with your audience and kind of give them your backstory, but it's also hard to talk about yourself. Yeah. I don't know. know. I do a pretty good job of yakking about myself a lot. I talk a lot. Yeah, you do. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I mean, you know, when somebody else is asking you questions, it kind of like gives you uh, permission to kind of talk about yourself in a different way. So yeah, I just thought it'd be interesting. All right. Well, I mean, the ball is in your court on this one. Yeah. So, so I mean, you got to start off. Did you write <laughs> down questions? You told me you didn't even prepare for this. Yeah. Did well, you lie to me? Maybe. <laughs> I don't have a book. Okay. But I do have 25 random questions. Oh, okay. So this isn't even going to be about weight loss stuff. It's nope, just be random this questions. Is nothing. So no, <laughs> this is, this is our initial where you bring your book out and oh, ask me a random question. Oh, okay. Question. I brought so. the book. You can use that on me too, if you want. No, we'll use this. One. Okay. So pick a number one to 25. 24. Ooh, what? I think we may have asked this one before. If you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Sushi. That was quick. Good sushi, though. Not that's like gas station sushi. <laughs> oh, or not like I Chinese buffet sushi. I thought that's what you were referring to, is gas station sushi <laughs> for the rest of your life. That's <laughs> what you would like to eat. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. Okay, speaking of that, here's this is where I'm going to get long-winded. So we went um, to uh, Brown County, Indiana this weekend, and we went because I wanted to find John Mellencamp's driveway and he lives outside of Bloomington, Indiana. So on the way back to Cincinnati, we took nothing but back roads because I, I just love small towns and I love specifically small town grocery stores. And um, and there was I was plus Casey's anybody's in the Midwest or like Indiana, Iowa, Illinois, Casey's Pizza is the bomb dot com go to Casey's and so that we, we didn't even plan on seeing Casey's and we drove past a couple of Casey's and Huck's. So have you ever been to a Huck's nope. gas station before? So talking about like gas station sushi, this is this is on the top of like Amanda's favorite foods ever is specifically from Huck's, the gas station, their deep fried chicken gizzards. That is my jam. And it's the unhealthiest thing on earth. Chicken gizzard? Yeah, dude. Mm. But deep fried chicken gizzards from Oof. Huck's. So good. Oof. Yeah. That's- <laughs> I ate those all the time when we go to my grandma's house. We'd go to Huck's and get chicken gizzards and potato logs. I mean, that's why I have a weight problem. Um, It's just basically like a big fat French fry. If Hmm. you think like it take a bit like potato wedges. So it's a little bit gooier in the middle or. Yeah, but they would still just like fry the hell out of it. They'd be crunchy. Hmm. Any sort of potato also put into my face. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) 
Fair enough. Is that is that your only question? Uh, like that? I mean, we have we have random ones here. This is your interview. Let's I'm go, just asking. Let's go one more. Okay. That one was pretty basic. So one to twenty five. Can't pick twenty four. But I was not only did we see multiple Hux, which I was shocked, but one of them was like the twenty twenty version of Hux. Like it was like the new and improved Hux. Blew my mind. <laughs> Why so? Because I didn't know that they were like they like rebranded, updated, <laughs> yeah, and then that they like looked cool and sleek, and that they were still building Hux gas stations. Yeah. The only ones I've ever been to have like you could tell have just like just, I, they had they, they just have they existed there forever. T- tested the the time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, one to twenty five, seven. Ooh, this is a good one. Okay, what motivates you to work hard? Oh God. That's a good question. Um, I think that I just really like the feeling of working towards something and then like having goals. I just really like having a goal and then achieving it. Like it just feels really good. I think the bad part is then you just chase after that feeling over and over again. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the motivation in a lot of it is too is to be like, I don't know if I can do this. I want to prove it to myself that I can. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's a lot of that of like, oh, I never thought I'd be a person that could run a half marathon. Well, let's see if I could do it or, you know, summit a mountain or do this stuff. Right. Like, well, I just want to see if I can just prove it to myself that I can. And then after that, it's like, well, what else can I do? Okay. okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, all right. So let's get into the the interview, okay, the okay. official part of it. You stop talking about gas station food. <laughs> I mean, let me get my interview hat on. <laughs> yeah, um, looks really professional. So, I basically just wanted to kind of go back to like your beginning, like what you know. You've lost how much weight? Um, at, at the most I've lost is 117 pounds. Okay, and so, not exactly at that exact number at this moment. Right. Mm-hmm. So when you, I guess, started this journey, what did that look like? Was it like, you know, and I'm sure you've answered these questions a thousand times. So if I repeat stuff, sorry. Yeah. But if you don't know it, I just want you to ask questions of me that you want to know. Yeah. Was it just like one specific like aha moment or was it a gradual, you know, and I get that the journey's had ups and downs, but can you pinpoint to one time when you were like, okay. That's no, it wasn't like an aha lightning strike moment at all. It was just being fed up and just being so unhappy and just like the space where I was at in my life where I started this, which was a New Year's resolution in 2012. Like I had just gotten married in 2019 and I had not eaten a single carb all summer to lose weight for my wedding. Okay. And then once I had my wedding... Then it was like, well, who cares? I don't have to wait for anything. You know what I mean? And so then it was, and then immediately after that, we got married in September of 09. And then we moved to Denver in February of 2010. So it was like barely enough time like to, after we got married to go to Denver. And so then I've always, because I've moved around so much, I've always had a hard time because I just love trying new things, of being in a new place. When you meet new people, you go to bars, right. you go out to eat, you want to explore everything. And so then, you know, I'm not really thinking about being really strict with my food or anything like that. I'm just thinking about trying all these new things and meeting new friends. And so that's part of it. And then from there, the the job I had was just probably the worst job I've ever had. And it was just, I worked with people, bad people. It was a bad situation. And then I just really went back to how I only dealt with pain and and discomfort of just eating to numb out. And at the time was the first time ever that me and Mike had different schedules. So whenever I got home from work, he wasn't home for like several more hours. So left me to every day after work, go hoard a bunch of food and then come home and power eat to the point of pain. Okay. And that went on for a long time. And it was like every day it was, well, I know how to lose weight. I've lost weight before. I'll start on Monday. Yeah. Today is my last hurrah. Well, I just need to eat all this crap now of like, I don't know when I'm going to be able to eat a whole pizza again. So let's eat a whole pizza tonight. And then tomorrow we'll start over. But then the tomorrow would be the next, yep. the same thing. Cause I didn't know how to handle any of negative emotions other than power eating. And 
So that job ended really badly, and I had started a new job um, a few months in. I don't remember the exact timeline before I started this New Year's resolution, and it was not only secret eating and like hiding all the trash and just I just hated myself and who I was of like I just hated living in my own body I just felt disgusting um everything I wore clothes just to constantly try to hide myself like at the time I wore I had a huge collection of scarves I even in the middle of summer I would wear scarves because I thought it would like hide all my fat rolls like and that was like my comfort and I just didn't like doing that of like I know that's what I was doing and I'm like I just hated that I felt like I had to hide all the time and when I did go out with my friends then we would go out and binge drink so I was binge eating by myself binge drinking with my friends I lived in Denver and I never even like walked around the park I mean it's one of the most beautiful places (laughs) right and it was just like a culmination of all those things of like it's just like this kind of sucks like I don't feel good I'm doing things that I feel incredibly shameful about. I'm like, it was just one of those things that just kind of got to the point where I'm like, I don't like this and there's got to be something better for my life. And for me, I've always felt like, because I'm always such like this introverted, very shy, quiet kid that wanted to be in radio, which doesn't seem like that mixes. And I always still felt like I could never be the person that I knew was inside me when I was with my my super close friends or how I could be on the radio because nobody can see me in real life because I was so hiding in myself. And I'm like, how come it just didn't just two puzzle pieces jamming into each other and it wouldn't yeah. click and I hated it. So it just happened to be a New Year's resolution. And I was doing that with um, my coworkers at the time. Uh, writer who was one of them who was just on my podcast a few weeks ago and we made 90 day resolutions because we read some news story because just you know like just radio people do is regurgitate all what yahoo news says right and that i'm like you know to make it more manageable and not think of it of a year and so each of us there was three of us wrote up three new year's resolutions that we wouldn't accomplish in 90 days and for me i'm like i just don't want to feel this anymore i'm like i know it's cliche to do weight loss resolutions, but I don't remember all three things. Two things I wrote down was lose 15 pounds in those 90 days because I felt like that was realistic and to floss every day. And I stuck to those two things and it's been eight and a half years later. I don't remember the third thing. I wish I would have kept it because I didn't know that was like my life changing New Year's (laughs) resolution. I had no idea. It was just a radio bit. And so it was that and for me too, a, uh, I'm like, I don't want to diet anymore. I had just dieted so many times that it was stop, start, stop, start. And I'm like, what if I just, and that's why my mantra from the beginning has been, you know, just make the best decision possible in every moment. Like, I don't want to deny myself beer or pizza or hot dogs. I just need to learn how that fits into my life in a better way than being told no until that no makes me crazy. And then I just eat all of them. Yep. And then I hide it because I don't want anybody to know that I sucked Um, or at least sucked in my opinion. So that's just kind of how like that's it was just like it just reached a boiling point. So everything boiled up and then it was a New Year's resolution, but it wasn't really just like a one aha moment. It was kind of like you were thinking about it all the time. Yeah. And then it was like, well, why not? Yeah. Like, why not now? Like, let's get this done. And even then. Like it wasn't, it was just, I just came at it with such a different approach that before it was, you know, I especially, you know, I really gravitate towards more the like super low carb stuff because it makes the weight drop off the fastest. Right. <laughs> and so, and plus my body is pretty sensitive to carbs. Like I'm just, that's just how my body is, which I've learned through actually learning about food instead of having a list of food, somebody tells me what to eat and right. what's good for me, what's not. And so, um, like I just didn't go into it like I had done everything else of like, where it's just go hard of like, follow these strict rules. And it just felt so different that I'm like, I'm kind of making up the rules, which is exciting, but really scary at the same time. Right. But I think the, the thing was, it's like by those, the 90 days I had lost 20 pounds instead of 15. And that was just, you know, trying to get more water in eating more vegetables like I just ate an insane amount of stir fry because I'm like I don't 
just eat steamed broccoli. I, right. That's not just who I was at the time. But I'm like, I know I need to change what I'm eating from just burgers and fries and pizza and chips and cake and everything else. Like, I know that's not going to get my goals accomplished. So how do I find a way to get those healthier foods where I don't hate it? Like, I like stir. And at the time, like, I don't care what even what stir fry sauce I put on it. I was not even at the very beginning. It wasn't like measure this out. It was do whatever you got to do to make it taste good. Just so you start eating vegetables. Okay. And so like that's I feel like that's a question people ask me a lot. And it's it's hard because at first like that's I didn't do it the quote unquote right way or the way diets tell you to do it. It's just I mean, I put a half bottle of teriyaki sauce on frozen vegetables and chicken (laughs) because that's what I had to do at at the time to eat it. it. And so it was just those kinds of tricks. And then as that was working and then you start kind of plateauing. You're like, okay, well, how do I move to the next step now? Yeah. Well, let me cut this back. Um, or let me try something else maybe I like. Like I was on a big kale chip kick for a long time too. Um, and that, I mean, when I made them at first, I would just drown them in olive oil. And well, that's why I liked them. <laughs> and then it was like, yo, that's probably not going to, you know, get me closer to my goals. Like let's, let's find it a space where it still tastes good but you can just add a little bit less. And it was just, everything was just such a gradual, not overnight, different shades. Like it took me probably about a year to going from never drinking coffee and hating coffee to learning how to drink black coffee because I didn't, I was such a Red Bull addict that, I mean, those giant cans of Red Bulls, like the tall boys, like I would drink a couple of those a day. Um, And so I'm like, I know that's horrible for me. Like, I know black coffee it has the caffeine I want, but doesn't have all the sugar in it. Right. So how do I get there? And so I started by dropping the Red Bulls, and then I would get iced mochas, which still has a ton of sugar in it, but it still got me a way to drink coffee. And then when I felt I was at my ending point at that, I went to iced lattes, which is just milk and coffee. And then I just went to black. Okay. Well, I think that's such a huge point, right, is like, like everybody thinks of it, like you said, like you didn't do it the right way, quote unquote. Yeah. But I think that if people would approach it like that of, hey, there's this spectrum of health, there's really, really healthy and there's really, really unhealthy. And usually your actions or your habits are going to fall somewhere in between there. And your habits are going to change based on where the conversation is that you're having, you know? Yeah. the Amanda back in, you said 2012 12. is mm-hmm. when you started. It, you're having a way different conversation with that Amanda than the conversations that we have today. Yeah, for sure. Because of the process that you went through. Um, so during that process, is there any habits that have stuck with you through that time? Like these are like my five core things that I try to do. You know, you're not going to do them perfectly all the time, but are these, or what are your kind of staples that you kind of gravitate towards? Um, definitely water. Yeah. Of working more water in. And um, so that, that's that been a thing too, because I never drank water beforehand. Okay. Like it was just Red Bull and Dr. Pepper. <laughs> just straight caffeine. Just Which is crazy because IV of caffeine. If you, if you know me now, I and mean, how long uh, you've come to the radio station where I work there and saw my giant jug of water, like, uh, you know, that's just. If you and that's what's so crazy about me moving around and stuff so much. If people just only know me at certain stages yeah. of my life and not since the beginning of, like you knowing me now, can you imagine me sitting here drinking Dr. Pepper mm. while I'm talking to no. you? <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting. I know, but it's like that's that's who I. I mean, I remember specifically one time me and my friends went to a restaurant and I ordered Dr. Pepper and I drank him so quick, like this dude brought me a pitcher because he was like, so we had to <laughs> here, stop. Here, I'm tired the table. of coming back. Yeah, and he's like. <laughs> He's like, seriously, to me, and he's like, do you want me to bring you the hose? That's awesome. It's like when you're hungover and you go into a restaurant and you're like, just leave the pitcher. Just, yeah, right? I, I'm just, I need to rehydrate. Yeah. Just leave that pitcher. So like, it's, so the water thing is, that's really stuck with me. Um, I'd say just like uh, a thing that's, that not from the very beginning, but I, I learned really quickly. That's a big thing for me is just being prepared. Like I know for me, if I don't have any sort of plan I'm I just like shotgun blast. I'm all over the place. Yeah. I need to have, I need to put the bumpers down for myself. And so that's why I really gravitate towards meal prepping. Yeah. Like that I've been meal prepping 
for like seven years. Okay. Um, that came on because that got to a point, like I told you, like the gradual shades of things mm-hmm. of dumping half a bottle of teriyaki sauce on it to t- fine tuning things more and more. And then as I was doing that, I just learned I'm like, this is better for me when I have it prepared. And I hate the feeling of standing in front of the fridge and not know what's going on because then I will make bad decisions. If I'm hungry and I don't have anything planned out, I'll skid all over the place. And I'm not as bad with that now, but I am if it's like a bad day right? or if it's a PMS day or something like that. And then if there's not a healthy snack for me, I'm like, I don't care what it is. It and does that kind of just open the floodgates? Yeah. Because yeah. then it's like, well, you already did that. Right. And it's like, you know better, but when you're in that mood, yeah, you're like, I just want to change the mood, change yeah, the just mood. Make me feel better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. this cookie dough will do that. <laughs> and so that's really stuck with me a lot is, is the planning and, and the prepping, not even so much the meal prepping of like having healthy snacks around of, you know, I have healthy snacks in my purse In my purse right now I have packets of tuna and almond butter just because just in case you never know. Yeah. And I mean, I, uh, cause part of my decision too, at the time, which we didn't talk about into that new year's resolution, I also decided not to have any soda or fast food because for me at that time, I knew that was something I couldn't regulate. I was too all or nothing. At least I was aware of enough of that at the time that I'm like, I can't go to McDonald's and make a quote unquote healthier choice. Yeah. If I'm going to McDonald's, yep. I'm getting a Big Mac, I'm getting some chicken nuggies in there, and I'm getting some sweet and sour sauce, and I want a Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to go, and their salads aren't that healthy for you anyway. Right. I'm not going to go there and take it a salad and then pick off all the good stuff for, and then eat a McDonald's sad salad. Yeah, like, like sucks. Why, why did we go here? Yeah, right. Why did I, I pay for this? Yeah, I paid mean, $7 for this <laughs> worst salad ever because I picked all the good stuff off. And so that was something, a decision I made, too, just because I knew I wasn't in a place to control it more and now that i am in a place to control it i also realized i don't need it in my life Mm -hmm. so i haven't had fast food or soda since new year's of 2012 with minor little exceptions like in and out burger yeah um whenever i I go to california or whatever um but i think in and out burger is really the only exception to that well Uh, and we we've also talked before about as long as it's a conscious decision, then, you know, it's, it's quote unquote, okay. Yeah. Right? I don't feel deprived. Yeah, I'm not putting like, the rules on myself that I didn't want to abide by. Right. And I think that if people would understand themselves more through this process, they could say, you know, instead of I can never have this again, I just can't have this right now. Yeah. You know, I know that's a trigger for me. I got to stay away from that for this point in time. But at some point in my life, I'll be able to to get that back into the equation. Yeah, you just, it, but that's hard. And that's what takes time. That's why it's so hard to stick to because this all takes so much time. Mm-hmm. Like before, I've lost 60 pounds in six months when I stayed on this really strict diet. And doing this, it took me two and a half years to lose the majority of my weight, like most people don't want to hear those long haul numbers, but also it's been eight and a half years right. and I didn't gain those that, you know, the weight back immediately after I quote unquote stopped. So it's, I think that you have to do all those things to realize that it, it doesn't work for you. Right. And I think that's what sucks is you have to go through all of the hard crap mm-hmm. to be like, you have to know what doesn't work. And so for me, I had done that for a whole decade. I knew the things that didn't work for me as well. And not to say that I didn't slide back or have failures. I've had a million of those in the past eight and a half years. But um, it's also yeah, just like having knowing that you're going to have to redefine your relationship with certain foods. And not everybody has the same issues that I do. Like I just food is I mean, I have a binge eating disorder, Yeah, you know, so it's, it's it's not that everybody has that. But like, you know, for some people, you got your thing like you got your cheesecake or whatever. And like, oh, my God, I can't control myself around it. Then you have to have a hard conversation with yourself of how do you build a relationship around that and to say that you can't not have it, but then how, when do you have it? So you don't feel like you're, you're on, you know, cheesecake prison. Right. And that's, what's really hard of navigating those waters. And then once you have the cheesecake, 
how that you're can be in a place that you're okay with it. Right. And, and you, you just feel good about it and yep. you're happy about it and you move on. And that's for me was really hard to, because anytime I quote unquote fell off the wagon or made a bad choice, it was just terrorizing myself. And then, then, then I would feel bad and then I'd want to feel better by eating more food. Does that still, and I'm sure it does to a degree, does that still happen like today? Totally. Yeah. Um, I, I think the biggest part for me is not that it doesn't exist. It's just I understand it. Yeah. And I can I know when it's coming on. Like, um, you know, I was binging every day, like forever, for a long time. And now, oh, my God, uh, maybe this past year has been different. This has been a really hard year in my life. Um, but even then... On a real true binge, I've maybe had one or two in the past year. Yeah. Um, and that I really gave my permission for because I've had a jacked up year. Um, but I recognize the feelings that lead up to it now. I recognize the feelings when I'm in it and can consciously make the decision of just let it go. Just let it happen. And I think the biggest thing for me too, is if I go into a binge, because once I'm in it, there's no stopping me. It is like, it's something I can't even describe of like, it's just, you just have to live in the storm. Like in, in a binge, it's not like, oh my God, this cake is so good. I can't quit. It's like, I will eat anything. (laughs) I will eat stale crackers that have been in here for seven years. I just have to eat. And can you like see yourself in that? Yeah, I can see yeah. myself in it. Okay. And that's what sucks is you know that yeah. you're in it and you don't care. You're like, whatever, go time. I'm eating icing right out of the container. Don't, and I'm like, eat to the point you feel sick, eating things that don't even taste that good of just like, it just, you have to just keep piling it in your face. At least that's how I feel. And then what sucks is when it's over. Yeah. Is then you're like, oh, God. God, and then is the worst feeling because you feel so fat and disgusting and ashamed of yourself. And it's something that for me for a very long time, I don't talk to anybody about. I did not start talking to literally anyone about this binge eating that I've had until I have talked about it on this podcast. I never even talk, I've never talked to Mike about it. Because you were st- so self-conscious about yeah, it. Yeah. Like, okay. I don't want him to think I'm gross. I never talked to my friends about it. Right. Nothing. Yeah. And so it's such a shameful, hard place to be in and how hard it is to get help with that. And for me, at the time, I never would have classified that as binge eating. I just thought I just like, for me, I'm like, I'm just fat. Just POS, This is what fat right? chicks be able yeah. to do. And like, that is how mean I was to myself. Mm-hmm. I didn't even see that as... I didn't see it as numbing out. I just saw it as just, I love food and this is what I do. And it's just through so much of, I've been through and learned and conversations with other people. And, and I didn't even realize that you could have classified me in binge eating disorder until uh, an interview I had with an expert on this podcast um, in 2018. And they, I told them like what I would do and they're like, Oh yeah, like you should have, you should get professional help. And I'm like, really (laughs) like I never would have slapped an evening disorder on myself and it's you know they there's so many people out there living this and you just you don't know like well yeah because they're I think our society deems that stuff like unacceptable right like it's shameful it's gross what's wrong with you get it together yeah even though it happens and it happens to everyone you Mm -hmm. know it's just varying degrees that I think that it happens so um I guess what would be some of the major habits that you've kind of, when you see that coming on, cause that was something that you were doing on a regular and now yeah. you're doing it like once or twice a year yeah, and pretty much giving yourself permission. So when you see or feel that stuff coming on, what are some of the things that you do to kind of counteract that? Um, I will say again, that's where it's good to have a plan where I'm like, okay, if I need to just binge, then um, make sure I have like grapes. Okay. Um, when I first started this weight loss journey, then I, cause I still had a, a binge feeling all the time. And I've talked about this and I've talked about this with therapists on this podcast. I, w- I don't know why it was my go-to and apparently other people have done this too. It's just eat huge bags of baby carrots. And so for me, I felt, and I still do feel whether it's the right answer or not, 
feel better of like, if I have to have this binge, at least I can binge on healthier foods. For sure. So like one of the times I had a binge, um, a good example of that was, was it last year? Yeah. Yes. When I did my tween week. Okay. When I interviewed, um, I'm pretty sure that was, or was it 2018? I don't know. Um, I'll put the episodes in the show notes. <laughs> uh, when I, I interviewed these middle school girls about body yeah. image, and particularly the first episode that we recorded with these, you know, um, 11 year old girls, and they were just saying such mean, hateful things about themselves, which was awful to hear that an 11 year old thinks that so horribly about their own body. But it was also, that was me. Right. Like, that was me at that same age. And that's part of me now. And oh my God. And so, like, I was trying to let, not let them see that I was crying whenever I was interviewing them. And so that night, like, I just felt numb. Like, it just numbed me. I didn't even want to think about it. And then the next day, I was driving to work and I was thinking about how I was going to edit it. And I just burst out crying in my car. And I couldn't handle it. And I got to work and I'm like, I need to binge. Like, I need to feel better. And so I left work. I went to Kroger and I bought um, a bunch of like blueberries and raspberries and baby carrots. And I sat out in my car and I binge ate them. Okay. And they're like, so like that. But like, I felt better about that. Yeah. So, I mean, you're still quote unquote binge eating, but you're doing it with healthier foods. Yeah. So okay. that's my go to again. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know. Just talk to a therapist, whether or not that's good or not. But yeah. Like, no, that's, that's what I, I mean, did. And I that's what I gotta, do. You got to figure out what works for you. And yeah. So water preparation. Yeah. What are some other staples? Um, or those are the two main ones. Well, I think a lot of it is just, just knowledge. And I don't know if that counts as a habit, but just, I guess paying attention, yeah. reading labels, like knowing uh, in the habit of caring about what goes into my body. And even if like, you know, I am just like eating some like crappy Chinese food or something like that, or you're just going to like to a dive and you have no idea how they made it, but it tastes so freaking good. Like, like even then it's like, I understand what that is, you know, just the understanding of, um, you know, I'm not counting calories of or anything, but I, I, I get the vibe of exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so just that of, I, you know, I'm really particular about ingredients and food and that, you know, I'm a big believer of just sticking to more real foods. Like I just had somebody email me this morning that they were going backpacking and they're like, what kind of snacks and food should I take with me for this overnight backpacking trip? And I'm like, well, I mean, the kind of the go-to for people is to get like granola bars and protein bars and stuff like that. But I'm like, I'd prefer you just take food like for just regular food. Like you can make your own jerky and dried fruit. It's way cheaper than if you buy it already dried or jerky. Like that way you know what it is. It's like dried mango and dried beef. Right. <laughs> and like, or, you know, just um, to make your own sandwiches to like, so that way you know, like what kind of bread you're choosing and the ingredients you're choosing of, I, I just feel like a part, a big habit of learning all this is I guess having control of the ingredients and understanding what I'm putting in my body and actually think the biggest difference for me is actually caring about it and not being somebody told me that I'm supposed yeah. to care about it. And, and but I, I like really do. And I'd say that I'm even more relaxed on that now than I was specifically like when I lived in Oregon, like everything is so, farm to table and like I was really pretty hardcore about it when I lived in Oregon and um, I'm a little bit more relaxed on it now but right but I just think that that's something that stuck with me is knowing what you're putting into your body and also to be uh, in the same token of that of being very aware of what's marketing and what's not because oh, yeah. I you know I have totally fallen for those things when I did Weight Watchers I've used this example a bunch one of the times they did Weight Watchers, they had the like little Weight Watchers, like little chocolate cakes, and they're like one point each. So that just told me like you can eat the whole box because I can eat that many points in a day, right. like go time. And so like stuff like that, where I felt like, oh, this is healthier because the Weight Watchers labels on it. No, it's still chocolate cake yeah. with a Weight Watchers yeah. label on it. 
And so stuff like that or, you know, everything that's, you know, gluten free or fat free or any of those like buzzwordy things or this is keto or whatever of really getting a good handle and a a book that's really great. God, I know I always get the name wrong. Is it fat, sugar, salt? Okay. It's a really good book. And it's some variation of those three words um, or sugar, fat, salt, something like that. That was really eye opening for me of how much food is designed to just light up your brain and keep you eating more. It isn't like not to make you healthy or to fuel you is to make somebody else more money. Right. And so, you know, just being armed with that knowledge changed how I looked at what I was eating. It doesn't matter if this is like Annie's mac and cheese and Annie's has a better vibe to it than Kraft. It's still boxed mac and cheese. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. is that a better choice than me making my own macaroni and cheese and controlling how I make it? Uh, like, yeah, it'll do sometimes, but that doesn't mean it should be a staple for me right. because it's still full of preservatives and everything else. So um, I think that's a, a thing that's really stuck with me, too. OK, OK. So now you're kind of shifting gears, right? So you've you've went through the journey of weight loss, and there's a lot in there, obviously, that we could talk about. But now you're into coaching people mm-hmm. and kind of helping with the nutrition from that perspective. What would you say, because you're very new to that yeah. realm. Yeah, I haven't even, like, officially started. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, I have with, like, with test people, but I haven't, like put myself out there for the, for the, for the general populace yet. Okay. Well, sorry if you want to edit that out, go ahead. Yeah, you know, that's really <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Um, but you know, you're obviously getting a bunch of different questions now. What are some of the things that are like, what's the main question that you get from people that you're like, I understand where you're coming from, but. Um, I just think that there's all just so many confusion. There's so much confusion for a lot of people on what's the right thing to do, quote unquote. Yeah. Because you hear keto is such a big one right now. And there, you know, just every, like, you know, there's the 28 day fix and there's the 90 day shred and there's South Beach diet and there's a million, di- like, there's just so many different things of like, oh, there's, I mean, the other huge thing right now outside of keto is like you know, intermittent fasting yeah. or carb cycling or all of these things. And I think that a lot of questions are like, is this the best? Does this work? And for me, I mean, unpopular answer is like, I don't know, it could work for you. Right. It could be, it could be your favorite thing ever. Yeah. Like I, I can't tell you not to do it. I mean, I have my own personal thoughts on all of them, but that doesn't mean I don't think anybody shouldn't try that lifestyle or try it and then borrow things from it. And I don't think that like with keto, you either have to be full blown keto and like, or you're just not punching people in the streets because they don't believe your keto lifestyle. Like that's insane to me, but like, or just any sort of paleo CrossFit, everybody is a tribe. Goes into the cult. Right, yeah. that cult and, mentality, and there's like, no whoa. selling them anything else. Yeah. And I think that's what's really dangerous, mm-hmm. because then I think that if you do something and you do love it that much, and it's really great when you love it that much, when you start falling out of love with it, then you have an identity crisis, and you don't know how to eat or behave without that. Yeah. And I feel like that part's dangerous, just because I've lived it. Right. And yeah. that's kind of the definition of yo-yoing, right? Like yeah, you, like you you're know all what in works or for you're you, all out. and then you're like, oh, and then you go back to what worked for you. Okay. But that's why I think that's it's a really hard question to answer, which is why I do want to do one-on-one coaching rather than here's my plan, follow my plan, yeah. because that doesn't work for everybody. And that's what you know I've learned, and especially talking through so many people on this podcast, everybody has a different avenue to success. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah, maybe you did keto and there's parts about it that you love, and parts you hated. Well, why don't you take the parts that you love and incorporate it to something else? Right. And just you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to eat however you want. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, depending on, you know, your financial situation and right. whether you live in a food desert or not. Um, so that's that I think that's why. That was what gravitates me towards that now. And one of the reasons I haven't officially started coaching it either is like, I don't, I want to do it the right way. And for me, I know the right way through what I've learned through my weight loss journey is give it time. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a race. You race it 
you're gonna it's gonna be sloppy and gonna mess it up and you're gonna have to start all over again yeah. that's what i've been like learned from my own journey so it's like i don't want to do this until it's 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 right so you're ready to do yeah, it yeah and so then i can be better for other people and the reason i want to do that is because i feel like especially now now it's a worse environment than when i started because i mean instagram was around right. like everything was around but it's so different now of like how everybody's a coach and everybody, everyone's an expert yeah and oh. everybody wants to sell you their program their their shred or their weight, you know, like everybody has this like tailored plan that they want you to buy into. And I, you know, cause I've been a person that's fallen into those traps. And I think that's dangerous because if they don't work for you, then you feel like you're the failure, right. not the plan was the failure right. that you failed. Yep. And I just want to be, you know, one of the many voices in the noise to be like, it doesn't have to be that way. Like, let's just really sift through this the way that I had to sift through it by myself, I'm going to take my years of knowledge mm -hmm. and how can I help somebody maybe speed that process up a little bit more and, you know, and learn it all in a faster pace than the way that I did. Well, yeah. I mean, that, that by definition is a coach, you know, so many people say that they're a coach and it's like, you're not a coach. You've just written, <laughs> you've just written out a program and you just keep handing the same program yeah. to people. It's not, you're not coaching anyone. You're just here, do this. You yeah. know? So I think that that's, the key to it you know i mean so many people try to just like you said speed it up and not give it its time and not just almost like we've talked about before enjoy the process of yeah. it so but that's what's scary because those things do get you that pretty before and after picture like mm -hmm. look how much weight you lost in a month like yeah. i can do this for you and i you know i'm not promising those sorts of things so i feel like anybody that wants to work with me is going to have to know exactly what they're signing up for yeah. like you know you're not going to you're not going to go down five pant sizes in a month. We're in the first month. We're just going to be talking about your relationship with food yep. and the stuff like there's just so much that I wish I would and that I know it now that looking back, I'm like, how did I not know that? It seems like so simple. It seems like, and it's just, it's like you just, I, I wasn't ready to learn it yet. Yeah. And yep. it's crazy how that happens. Like you're just not, ready and just even with the examples of you know following people on their weight loss journeys on this podcast shannon from last year yeah. like there's only so much you can do but if that person isn't ready if they're not in if they're not ready to put in the work put in the work and and listen and want to do it for themselves nobody's going to be able to help right and that's that's a part that's really hard for me and that's what we've talked about too of like being a trainer being a coach or anything that i i'm just gonna have I know it's just going to break my heart and I don't know how to handle that of yeah. like where I'm like, I just want to do it for you. Mm -hmm. Like I want this so bad for you. How come you don't want it too? Yeah. like, Oh my God, I just want, just come yeah. on. And, and, <laughs> and, and yeah, it's like the majority of people want it and then they, but they just want it so fast. You know, yeah. it's like, no, 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 you have to, you have to take these bumps and bruises. I know they suck. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to, to have that pain, but going through the pain, when you get to the other side of it, you're like, ah, now I get it. Yeah. And you just become a better version of you for it. So. Well, and I think another point is too, is to also really think about what your goals are and how everybody's goals are different. Mm -hmm. Like some people are like, I want to lose weight and I want to get in a bikini. And that seems like generally is what like media puts on us or social media or anything of like just the general culture. Yeah get skinny, get hot. Yep. And, you know, I think that if your goal is I just want to move better and I just want to feel good, like what does it matter if you get in a bikini or not? Right. Like, or get in a bikini and not this quote unquote per perfect bikini body. But if you're feeling it yeah. and you're liking it, then you hit the goal yes. because somebody yes. else looks at you and that's not their goal. Doesn't mean it's that wrong. you're not hitting yours. Yep. And that's why I just think that, you know, I, I don't know how you could possibly help people in such an intimate way without doing like one-on-one -on -one learning somebody's goals. And like, if you just buy like somebody's program like that, or even like, you know, I've done beach body. Like, oh, it's yeah. just like that, you know, if you're following an exam, exact program of like, what if my goal isn't to be shredded? Like, what if I just want to feel better? What do you mean? Why, <laughs> why wouldn't you want to be shredded? What's yeah, wrong right? with you? And I feel like that's <laughs> changed for me too. Like, I feel like that I'm in a, really transition space like in this exact moment of like 
what are my next goals and like what what does health mean to me and what is a, a size or a body that I feel really comfortable in and like just you know, completely reevaluating myself. And I feel like that's the healthiest thing I could do is actually think of that rather than be skinnier, yep. be less person. Yep. That number on the scale keeps going down. And I have spent so much of my life doing that, that I feel like a huge win for me in this moment, which is even different than a year ago, mm-hmm. is to, is that what success is? Is that my goal? Is that what healthy is to me? Not what other people looking at me think. Yep. Yep. Is that what I want? Yep. And... I mean, that's, it's a hard place to get to. It is. And it's, <laughs> and it's a hard place, even when intellectually, when you know it, right, it's so hard to define it because y- you want to be the best that you can be, right? Like, yeah. I think that's what society has created for us, but you're, you hit the nail on the head of just saying like, well, what is that for you? What is the best version of you? And then be realistic about it, right? Like how much time can you devote to this? You know, do you have kids, family, outside yeah. things that are going to pull your energy from that, maybe you can't give 150% to this one area, yeah. you know, and, and that, and again, that may change. Well, and and I think that's hard too. Like a thing I'm struggling with, with that is again, letting go of like cultural perceptions of what that is. Like for me, like it sounds so good. Like I'm like, I don't need to be shredded or anything like that. I'm like, I just want to be like where I'm like, feel good. Like I'm just happy. Like, yeah. you know, and I'm like, like, but when you see images of people like that, like you think they're like doing that of like, they're like on a beach at sunset or they're riding a boat. Of course they're like hot skinny models in the commercial. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's what I want to feel like. I want to have that feeling, but I'm not allowed to have that feeling until I look like that. And that, that's a total, this is jack your mind up. Yep. And like, I'm living that right now. Like yeah. that's the feeling I want. That's the life I want but I'm not allowed to have that life because you can only have it when you have this certain body type and this mm-hmm. certain look to live this life in. And that's such garbage, but intellectually, you know that yep. and you still just fight against it. It's yep. so stupid. <laughs> but I do have to say that I like you haven't used the adjective, a trash bag full of nachos in a while. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. That's a, that's a, that's a win. <laughs> yeah. I, d- I mean, I don't feel like a trash bag full of nacho cheese right now. Um, there's days that I do, but I don't know, but I, I feel like that's, I, you took that personally. You took that like some slide against you. Like you could, yeah, because I'm training you. Yeah. But that's, you're not understanding. That's just like, I understand a descriptor of how you feel that has nothing to do with you. Clear. But it, there's a part of coaching that when you take a responsibility for helping someone get from point A to point B and, you know, th- I think that's a sign of a good coach is somebody that cares, yeah. you know, about the individual that they're trying to help. And then knowing that you're feeling that way, there's a level of e- intellectually, you know, it's not you. Yeah. You can't put in the work for them, but there's a part of you that goes, but I'm failing somehow because I can't get hurt or not feel that way, mm, you know? Yeah. So it, it's a weird thing because intellectually, you know, it's like, it's on you, but then there's a part of you that's like, yeah, but you're, that's your job. That's what you do. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> well, that awkward silence of, mm-hmm. of interviewers that shouldn't do. No, well, I mean, you're fine. <laughs> well, so what, what other, what other things do you want to know? I mean, I think like, that you was know, like my, my star sign. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I would say that, I mean, that pretty much wraps it up, right? It's a general nutshell of, I mean, there's a lot more details that yeah. we could get into. There's obviously. nothing else you want to know about, about my journey? Nothing that like intrigues um, you that you don't already know? I mean, did you already know all that stuff about me? Well, uh, to a degree. I mean, I'm sure there was levels of you just wanted to give up, but there is there one point? that sticks out to you where you're like, that was close. Like I really almost mm. said X nay on all of this. Mm. No, no. Um, 
No, which I guess I think is a point for me to be really proud about. Yeah. Um, just because, I mean, I think that there's been parts where it's become more stressful, like quitting my full-time radio career to pursue this, that it puts this weird pressure on me instead of it just being my lifestyle. Now it's like my career too. And that's added this other weird element that I've had to like kind of mentally sift through. And it didn't make me want to quit, but it's put a different kind of pressure on it. Right. Whereas before it's just like, I just love this life and I, I'm loving this stuff and I love helping other people. I love it so much. Let's next level it. Okay. I'm at the next level. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, of yeah. like, then they're like, and you know, it, it's crazy how just some people's like, offhanded comments they don't like they say it as a joke but you know like how much it just sticks in your brain i can't even tell you who said this to me but um it was sometime in the like past year because i was talking about how i was going to you know quit my job and pursue you know, health and fitness full time and somebody's like well man now you really can't get fat again and wow. i'm like yeah <laughs> You say it like that, you know, I, you know, okay, yeah. Then that, nope. But that's in your head, like, yeah. it's of like, but then it's like you spin yourself, and, you know, and that's such a, now we didn't even touch about this uh, in this conversation, such a huge part of the journey is other people mm -hmm. and the crap they say to you and stuff, like still so much stuff where you know it's garbage just spins in your mind. Like my mom told me a couple of Christmases ago, she's like, oh, she's like, all that working out you do and your hips are still that wide, that's unfortunate. And so now... Even though I'm like, F you, I'm out of here. I I try on clothes, and that's the first thing I do. Like, God, your hips are so wide. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, it's in my head. Right. Like, it's just like, that stuff sucks. So I feel like people don't give that enough credit or write it off as like that. Yeah. Like, that's that, that, that happens. You should talk through that. Right. And, and so many people... Because I think intellectually we know, well, you shouldn't let that affect you. And you're oh, like, but it does. yeah, but it yeah. does. It totally does. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Somebody says something mean, like uh, me and Shannon, or me and Shay. Shay. <laughs> talked about this on the podcast a couple weeks ago because somebody said something really mean to her. And I'm like, I could tell you, times when I was 16 years old, somebody said something to me about my weight. Like, it just, like, it burns on your brain. And it's like, just go away. Just right. get out of my head. Random douchebag that yelled something at me. Why are you living in my head? Get out of here. And that's just, I think that, you know, that's not talked about enough. Right. With this of, you know, that stuff like really super hurts. And especially if it's, you know, a spouse or a family member or, you know, coworkers that you work with or friends and like somebody says something, they don't think of anything of it ever again. And you go in the bathroom and cry and you right. live with it forever. Yeah. It's um, just burning your mind. And yeah. It's awful. It created pain. And yeah. So yeah. There's so much of that of like, yeah, they said that to me. Now I'm going to go numb out and eat a bunch of food. So well, it's, and I think that that is so awesome for you and society. We're slowly making that transition, right? Like it's, people are starting to understand all of the components that come to health into health and they're having like open, real conversations about it. Like your podcast. I mean, you know, it's stuff like this that's going to make that change in health and fitness and, you know, not just be this super hot model that's on the cover yeah. of whatever magazine or Instagram that that's, that is the only thing that's health. Yeah, and right. you're not worthy unless you're that thing. Exactly. So if you if you can't grace the magazine cover, you can't talk about health. And I really appreciate you and um, other people that are bringing that to this realm of you know having real conversations about health and wellness and fitness and that kind of thing. So well, thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, uh, you know you got to wrap it up. Like you're the interviewer here. Uh, I'm, I'm taking my hat off. I'm done with the interview. Oh, yeah. I'm the interviewee now. <laughs> I don't like this side of the table. No, you don't like it. It's too. Uh, is it too hard for you? Are you it's too just, weak? Uh, ouch. <laughs> Words hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna etch that into my brain now. <laughs> no, it is. It's diff it's just different to to lead the conversation and try to 
you know, get relative information for people. So hopefully people liked it. All well, right. well, well th- if you're here 53 minutes later, oh. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, you can find Josh at Cincy360Fitness.com. Yep. Email you at info at Cincy360Fitness.com. Yep. And you can find me at AmandaValentineBites.com. Bye, Josh. See ya. For info on health coaching and more, go to amandavalentinebites.com.